Hey guys, Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire following up with um, a series I've had a couple of videos on about why teachers quit. Uh, one of my uh, videos was about uh, just general administrative overwhelming amount of work that we give uh, teachers. Uh, the second one was about student behavior. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, lack of respect. Uh, I believe a lot of teachers leave the profession. They don't find it very satisfying because of lack of respect. Uh, and people want to have a job where they feel like they're making a difference. They feel like um, their employee wants them, that they're, you know, they perform some kind of vital function. And you would think, well, teaching ought to be easy, you know, to, to feel that way. I mean, because, you know, you, you, these kids are all learning and all this. But on the other hand, there are things about it that make it very, very difficult to feel like they're really having the impact that they want to have. Um, the most obvious thing, you know, area of, of, of where you would see disrespect is from the students. Um, and it's not every student, but, um, you know, and you, and you get used to it. If you can't get used to it, you can't teach. Uh, if you can't deal with, with uh, you know, some 12-year-old um, cussing you out, then um, you're not going to make it in education. If you can't be a professional and just deal with that and let it just, you know, flow, you know, water off the duck's back kind of thing, then you're going to have a hard time uh, because it's going to happen. Um, and, you know, if you're going to be in high school, you're going to see it in middle school, you're going to see it a lot more in middle school and high school. If you're going to be an administrator, I mean, you're going to get called names. You're going to get cussed out. You're going to get, you know, just total disrespect. And, you know, you just got to realize, hey, they're kids. You know, the kids know nothing's going to happen to them. Uh, you know, really? Nothing's, you know, you can do whatever punishment it is, but it's not really a punishment. You know, putting them in out of school suspension is not a punishment to them. They're glad to get to stay at home. So it's just one of those things. You just got to, that, you know, if you can't deal with that, then you can't, you know, you just can't be in education. You, you've got to be able to deal with that. So, and I always looked at that as like, well, they're kids, and I don't think it's anything personal. They're just being kids they they care less whether it's me or somebody else they just don't like the authority um now the one that bothered me more than that was disrespect from uh, parents a lot of parents have a very low view of the education system uh they have a very low view of the education system in their area um they don't like teachers they don't like you know a lot of them, like the kids will do okay in elementary school, and then they'll get to middle school, and all of a sudden they'll start having trouble. And then they'll, you know, the first thing a lot of parents want to do is they want to blame the teacher. Um, and they look at it like it's just like a consumer mentality. Uh, like the teacher owes my son, you know, you owe my son an education, and you need to give it to him. It's not my problem, it's your problem. You're the one, you know, y'all make him come to school, and y'all got all these, so it's you. It's on you. You got to, you know, and um, and if you can't do it, then there's something wrong with you, you know, or, you know, or when you have to have a, a conference because um, the teacher told a girl she had to change seats at lunch uh, and the girl, were, you know, wouldn't do it because the teacher wouldn't give her a good enough reason for her to change. When you got to have a con, you know, and then the parents want to know, well, why will you move? You know, if a teacher can't tell a kid where to sit, you don't have a school. I mean, you just don't. You don't. You don't have a society. You know when you can't. When people in positions of authority cannot tell somebody where to sit or stop, or hey, could you go this way, please? Because there's a wreck over here. When you can't give directions for safety and for order, you don't have a society. So, if you got people like that, and that's the way they are at home, uh, and they don't respect any authority, they don't respect the police, they don't respect the government, they don't respect whatever, uh, and they're sending their kid to your school, then that kid does not respect your authority, you know. And uh, and the parents are the same way, you know, they'll talk to teachers. I've been on the phone. Teachers hate to call parents. As an administrator, I was constantly, I had to call them every day. Um, and, you know, they would, they really liked the fact, some of them, that they could just say anything they wanted to, and you really couldn't say anything back because you're, you know, you work for the state you know, I'm a public employee, so you cuss me out, all I can do is say, you know, don't cuss me out, uh, I'm going to hang up if you use any more profanity toward me, you know, and you just have to, you know, it's one of those things, you couldn't let it bother you, 
If that, if that bothered you and it hurt your feelings and all that kind of, you couldn't be an administrator. Um, so, you know, the disrespect from the parents and the disrespect from the community uh, is, to me, higher than it has ever been. You can look at surveys and stuff. Uh, a lot of people don't feel, you know, they don't respect teachers. Um, and as administrators, I think they, they have dealt with a lot of uh, disrespect from uh, district level, uh, local school level, federal level administrators that want to dictate every little thing and micromanage every little thing they do in a classroom. Um, you know, and when I was an administrator and I observed teachers, uh, and, and, you know, as time went on, the, the observations became more and more complex. It took more and more paperwork, more and more data, more and more proof that you were teaching and they were learning. Uh, like, I couldn't just go in there and look at it and say, it looks to me like they're learning. I mean, I had to have evidence and all that. So anyway, uh, me as an administrator, when I because I taught 17 years, when I would go in a classroom, I could size up pretty quick what was going on. Um, and if I could tell from the data that you have, and I could tell from what was happening, and I could tell from what the kids were doing, that kids were learning in that classroom, I wasn't going to mess with you. I wasn't going to sit here and give you a bad score because you didn't have the standard uh, written on the left side of the board up here on the thing, you know, or, or you didn't have the day's date on the right-hand side with this, so you didn't have uh, your lesson plans in a green notebook on the right hand side of your desk over next to the window and you didn't have uh, you know the word of the day posted on the back door you know I'm not gonna get if they're teaching and kids are learning I'm not messing with them I, I'm just not there's plenty of other teachers that are trying to teach that need to be micromanaged that need you to be in their room and need you to tell them what to do than to mess with the ones that are doing a good job no wonder they get frustrated. They're doing a good job. Kids are learning. They get good test scores. And then you're still in there fussing at them about, you know, what they wrote on the board or what color their chalk is or what. I mean, don't, you know, if they're teaching, let them teach. We don't want a bunch of teaching machines all doing things exactly the same way. If they're good at lecturing, let them lecture. You know, don't say, well, all you do is sit up there and talk. Yeah, but the kids love it. They're all taking notes and they all make good grades on my test and they get good grades on the score. Let them lecture. If they're good at it, you know. Now, if they're doing something wrong, stop them. You know, if, if the kids are, are failing, inter, you know, interject. Take care, you know, get, get you know, get, help them out. But if they're being successful, it's like a baseball. You take a baseball player that's hitting 400, you know, I'm not going to go in there and, you know, as a manager go, hey, uh, you know what, I don't like the way you hold your bat. I want you to change the way you hold your bat. I'm hitting 400, coach. I don't care. On our team, we hold the bat this way. Why would I mess with him? He's hitting 400. Let him hit, you know. So have the respect for the profession enough to, if they show evidence that they can do their job, let them do their job. Leave them alone. Let them do their job. Um, and I'm telling you, it's the same thing. The, the federal government don't think the states can, can do what they need to do for education, and the states don't think the counties can do what they need to do for education. And, it, you know, it's everybody is dictating all the way down, and it impacts the classroom, you know, and it's all because we don't think the teachers can make their own tests. We don't think the teachers can decide what to teach. We don't think the teachers can do stuff on their own. We don't think the teachers can, do, you know, can come up with rules on their own. You know, we don't think teachers can do classroom management. They can do all of that. You know, but anyway, a lot of uh, a lot of the lack of respect has come from administration, you know, and, and district level administration. Um, admit, you know, disrespect from uh, lack of respect from the national media has just been horrible. I mean, you, know, you get story after story after story about how the U.S. education system is failing, and da da da, and teachers in other countries do this, and teachers in other countries do that. You know, these other countries where these teachers are doing all these fantastic things are not really doing anything different than the way we used to teach 20, 30 years ago. It's just that their society is entirely different. Nobody looks at it and says, hey, in America, we have a problem with society. Our kids can't learn because the teacher can't walk in the classroom and say, everybody be quiet, sit down, and start teaching. You know, that's why we're having issues because... The teacher has to have a 45-minute conference because she told Johnny to sit down over here and Johnny wanted to sit over there. Um, you know, that's... We have a societal issue. They don't want to have it answer to any authority. They don't want to do what anybody tells them to do. 
Uh, they want everything customized, especially for them. It's a total consumer thing. Like I need. It's easy to blame the teacher. You know. Well, we're we're not we're not making good scores. Well, who who where they learn math from? The teachers. Let's blame the teachers. You know. Uh, you know we don't have good scores in in. Uh, well, who who taught the teachers? The teachers. It's the teachers' fault. Uh, it's easy for everybody to point a finger at the teacher. Uh, the kids can't act right. Whose fault is it? Well, who's in the classroom with them? The teacher. Okay, it's the teacher's fault. The kids can't act right because they're the one in the classroom with them. It, you know, it's not all the teacher's fault. You know, it's the family's fault. It's the, you know, it may be part of the teacher's fault. It may be, you know, it's maybe everybody's fault, but it's a societal thing. Um, but anyway, you guys that are teaching, thank y'all for, you know, plugging Thank y'all for staying in it and seeing a bigger picture of the education system is more important than whether the kid cussed me out today. You know, the United States still needs to be teaching math and, <laughs> you know, and I can't just quit because, you know, one kid said, called me the B word, you know, I got to keep, you know, I got to keep going. Uh, you know, and, and you people that, that are in the trenches and they're every day doing that, uh, I appreciate, you know, that. I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad I stayed with it the whole time. And, um, you know, it makes an impact. It's, it's, it's for, you know, it's for society. You know, it's not just for that kid. It's not just about that one kid that it's driving you crazy or whatever. So uh, thank y'all for the job that y'all do. Um, have a good day. If you had not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching Nichols Retirement Empire.